Hey, welcome along again. If you're watching it, hopefully someone watches this afterwards. Mm -hmm. Tell us you watch it. Tell us what you thought. Um, then we can know that we're not just talking to ourselves, but we enjoy talking to each other anyway. So right. even if you're not watching, we're having a good chat. <laughs> oh, Kylie's disagreeing apparently or something. No. <laughs> so we've been working through... Stuff from Intergenerate, looking at A Gospel for All Ages by David Sinos. We've talked a bit about what is intergenerational and thinking that sometimes there might be a spectrum from age segregation through to everything is intergenerational and maybe it's also just you have a culture of intergenerational and in some spaces that needs to be age-specific and some spaces that's all together. Um, we've talked about what... Um, preaching is, and I might share screen now because I can then run through the, yes, that, share, excellent. <clears throat> so we talked a bit about what preaching is, that preaching is, testifies to God's story, that it's an act, it's an act of empowerment for transformation, and that it is or can be actually an encounter with God. We talked a bit about Jesus being an intergenerational preacher, that as he preached, there would have been all ages, all the time. And we had some deep thinking theological thoughts last time that our carload of people helped us think through. <laughs> <clears throat> and how does preaching help us to make meaning together? Yes, we looked at that. So today we're going to end this segment this section of things, um, looking at who speaks the gospel. And so Dave Sinos says, if you go back to one of the ways of preaching, how does preaching help us to make meaning together? One method is the banking model of learning, that the preacher preaches and gives you all the information you need. And so in that model, obviously, the teacher teaches and the student learns. So the teacher becomes the subject and the student is the object. Student, you sit there and learn everything you need to know. I'll just in, do give you all that you need to know. But Dave Sinos says all people can be teachers and all people are learners. And everyone has something to offer and everyone has something to gain from one another. So that chance of how do we come together and hear each other because you might actually have something that... Um, brings that I hadn't thought about. Um, trying to think of an example, and I can't think of it, but I know there's been recently at one of the family services when we've been having sharing and someone said something, it's like, wow, I've never thought of that before. I think it was there. Somewhere recently I've been, and someone's, a young person said something, and I thought, oh, I've never thought of that before. So how do we open those opportunities? Because others look at things differently, particularly kids look at things differently because they don't carry all the baggage of what the words mean that we do and the stories mean. So they come with fresh eyes, which might be why Jesus says we need to be like the little children. We need to learn from them because they haven't got all the biases we have. So we can all learn. <clears throat> what could democratic preaching look like? <laughs> so what does it look like when we all have an opportunity to share into that space? Um, all have been called to hear the gospel and all have been called to proclaim the gospel. So as we're following Jesus, we're called to be witnesses, um, part of the key thing. So how do we allow the children to be witnesses as well as the adults in church, um, which is obviously one of the good reasons for doing the God moments, where have you seen God? Hearts in church, which allows everyone to preach. Um which is why I've got in the habits of doing it sort of after the offering. It's like you've brought your, or may have brought your physical offerings, but what are your offerings of preaching? Where is your proclaiming the gospel and God's acting in your life? <clears throat> um, so, yes, if you haven't noticed that or if you've noticed that and gone, why is he doing that? That's why. So it's that sense of here's actually everyone in the room's chance to preach. Um. <clears throat> Kate Bruce says it is important that preaching is seen as a communal calling, calling for response to God, 
from the preacher and congregation, openness and a desire to hear together and a willingness to engage. <clears throat> and again, I guess we're trying to help in that process with the preloading stuff that we're doing. But if families and people have been wrestling with this passage during the week, maybe once, maybe twice, maybe three times, then maybe they actually come with something that they can share. So, and it's wonderful that some small groups use that material for their small groups sometimes at least. And so, yeah, you're coming with something to share. And I know on Sunday evenings, we often have a, well, we were talking about this in small group and we were thinking this, but we really want the answer too. Mm. That's great. Um, don't know that they ever get the answer to, but um, <laughs> the question is posed. Um, we need to reimagine preaching as a practice for the whole community, experimenting together to figure out how your church may preach more intergenerationally, may actually be a reflection of the gospel. So how do we do it? Um, and Dave Sinos says that intergenerational preaching might be the monologue sermon, that that has a place, but it can also be other things. So what works? what works in our space. So maybe Sunday morning, yes, the more traditional sermon is more often going to be like that in the evening. That's not generally what we do. Sometimes we'll do that, but other times we have discussion type things. So <clears throat> again, I guess this is not about here's the new answer and we always do this. Churches are, like any institution, is good at that. What is the thing we just slip into and we always do it? Um, you know, the old saying in a church, if you've done it for two weeks, well, that's how it's always been done and you've now got a new tradition that you can never break. Um, this isn't about thou shall only do one way. Um, and he sort of finishes up by saying, gospel is about the kingdom of God coming near to us. It is a gospel story that moves around from separation to connection. So we move from that separation with Adam and Eve in the fall to connection through Jesus, from division to inclusion, from troubled to grace, from brokenness to restoration. It is a movement of the gospel that happens and we are participating in the restorative work of the gospel. So even as we sit there and, and talk about these things and we talk about our own stories, again, that's preaching. How do I talk about how I've moved from troubled to grace? I was having this problem with my child and then the doctor fixed it or suggested this and therefore I move forward. We preach into that. Um, again, that's the symbol of, you know, the God stories aren't just nice little stories. They are actually preaching. They're talking about this stuff. Um, what's in comments from all that? Should have realised when we got to the bottom of the page, you'd ask for comments, shouldn't I? Should have. <laughs> and he's getting close. He's getting close. He's going to ask me something. <laughs> Had you ever I thought? Guess I, 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 I'm you still go. stuck. I guess I'm still stuck on uh, the and you you explain something well. I'm trying to think of the words you actually used in relation to. Um, what our expectation of preaching is. I guess <clears throat> I'm thinking back, and to me, I'm uh, as you've explained, we've enjoyed various ways of doing it and being, we haven't probably got a significant intergenerational thing. We have got the age differences in the evening, mm -hmm. Sunday evening, we, you know, from Ollie up to, maybe ourselves as myself is one of the older ones um and there's at least two you get all my squeezing three generationals there mm -hmm. um but I, I guess i'm still thinking about a, a typical response um of at least mount Cavat, and i'm sure it's most uniting churches when you call a preacher um or call a minister or call a ministry agent one of the questions is, you know, what is, and the word is worship rather than preaching, but they also then come into uh, what sort of preaching do you like? 
And one of the responses I keep hearing, and that may reflect that we've had many ministers over the last few years, is it's got to be meaningful worship. So I don't know what that really means to whoever it might have been, and as many people would have said it. Yep. But that's, I guess, one of the things I'm I'm trying to understand. Um, and I hear these uh, one-liners, which you can put a few together and say, oh, yes, I can cope with that, or I can see that, but it's still fairly, you know, it's a wordy description. It's not very concrete uh, into how that would actually appear in a service, in a worship service, mm -hmm. some of these things when we get to it. So I guess I, I'm still just in that bit of boat wondering, I'll accept whatever comes my way, but wondering for others who would say, I go to church on Sunday because I need meaningful worship. And I want to make sure that intergenerate intergenerational worship Oh, intergenerational inter worship obviously includes a preaching component, um, is able to satisfy those people. Yep. So I hear the two words, whatever works, actually there's three words, but I threw the extra one in there, what works, but that doesn't help me understand how the worship, how the preaching might change to be inclusive and to be most positive for all those people. And you're probably not going to be able to answer that either. That's okay. But that's where I'm, what I'm listening out for. Yep. So that when people say, why are we doing this? At least I can um, have some input to this is what we're trying to achieve. And this is how we're going about it. And that makes lots of sense yep. rather than throw those eight dash points. I know that was just who speaks the gospel, but throwing a few points like that didn't really wasn't isn't really very concrete. No, I guess no. what I'm saying. I, I don't see what it will look like. I'm just thinking, oh, okay, they're extra words. Um, I'm still haven't got a, a an understanding of what it might look like. Yep, and yeah, a few things racing through my head to try and answer some of that. Sorry, no, yes, that's sorry, all right. Too that's good, good questions. Um, is Part of it is about what services going forward become intergenerational and are there services that go forward that are age segregated? So that sense of, like, if you look at, there might be two services on a Sunday morning. Is one a very traditional type service where probably the older people are going to go and they're going to get the things that they want in church? And is the other one a more contemporary intergenerational one where those that are in that space go along there? And this is what I'm looking for. So, yeah, again, that sense of this is a journey and you don't, you would never suddenly go, okay, we've been doing this all, now we're going to jump over to here and be intergenerational. So how do we think about that and do that? How do we move the understanding of the minister from the one who does worship to the person who curates worship. Um, it's a wording a few people I've heard use, that sense of you're there and you're setting up the things. So you can set up the discussion, you can set up the reflective things. You've done all your reading and so you know, okay, if this goes well, we've had all these comments. Yes, I've heard everything that I need to think needs to have been said. I don't need to say much or I've heard all these comments, but we've missed this point, I now need to speak into that. Um, so, yeah, it means the preacher being good to know what do I need, what needs to be covered and allowing that space. Um, so, yeah, Jock a number of times will ask a question and get out his whiteboard and jot things down. <clears throat> and you can tell by sometimes how he teases out an answer someone's given of, oh, I think you're looking for this answer somewhere along the lines and you're making sure you get it on your board. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it can be done by no one, probably no one else is noticing that. Um, but, yeah, so you can go into this discussion where everyone's feeding in and because you've done, the as a minister you've done, or preacher, as you've done the work beforehand, you can lead that discussion, get 
the things that you need to be covered. So, yeah, it's moving from the old model of the minister is the one who does the worship, um, which I guess if you think about worship and the use of liturgy, the liturgy means the work of the people. So to some degree that the minister does the worship is a newer idea because obviously you know, we're all meant to be involved in worship. Um, but in a sense, it's an old idea. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, how do we move from the minister does the worship and where it's that similar thing to um, thinking about worship and audience. And often when we think about a church service, we have the mu and particularly if you think of a Hillsong type thing, you've got the musicians are almost the performers. Congregation is the audience and God's up there. Whereas what should be happening in worship is the music leaders are the conductors, the congregation are the performers, and God is the audience. Mm -hmm. And so it needs, yep. worship needs that shift, and hopefully most people think that, but there's definitely circles where that's not the case. And so how do we shift, you know, and part of, I've had conversations a number of times with Ollie's like, we don't sing, why do we, why do we sing in church? We sing because we want to tell God how great he is and say things to him. So that's why we sing. And so, yes, trying to encourage you know, con same conversations with everyone. We sing because we're singing to the audience. We're performing. Stephanie would kill me for using the word performing, but we're performing to the audience of one. Um, we're doing the work. Yep. Yeah, we're doing the work. And so, yeah, again, how do we change that mentality of church is about? Um, not necessarily us getting, but us bringing. And to some degree, we need you to, sh we need others to share their stories so that when people from outside the church come into a service, they don't just hear the minister, but they hear all these other stories of God at work. You know, you imagine you're a non Christian, you walk into a church and six people stand up and talk about how God has been in their life that week. You're going to go, wow, this God is active these six different people saw God as opposed to well, the minister at the front got up and talked about how God was working in his life and that was it. Mm. <clears throat> so, yeah, there's also this power that that has. Um, I, I, I can see in that a, a great change in our basic expectation of me, church, worship yep. situation. I, I'm not seeing intergenerational discussions moving uh, well if they change the way we look that's important that thumbs up for that um I'm, I'm just trying to get there for intergenerational worship if we've said the way we used to do it obviously hasn't worked because we've lost generations plural now not just singular yes, yes. When it used, the way it used to be singular um so we look at something else Maybe wrong, but my expectation of you guys frozen. Yeah, no matter who I am, I could if they if the service was happening that way, um, at at a church or oh, way over there at Yeronga, another one over at Tarragindi, and one at Mount Cravat, and one at Holland Park. If I walked into it didn't matter whether I'm a 90 year old 19 or nine I would be comfortable I would come out feeling better knowing more and doing those things which the preacher loves to hear that I'm growing in my um <laughs> in my spiritual life um and whilst the other service over at Yeronga might be different it shouldn't matter whether I was 90, 19 or nine, I should be able to walk in. Even if there were no other nine-year-olds there, I should have been catered for before I got there and once I got there and not feel, not come out and say, we're not going back there, mum and dad, because there's no other nine-year-olds. Yep. I was included. I was part of that. Now, yep. obviously, that's not an instantaneous response, but um, that's how I 
was expecting intergenerational worship um, to work somehow. And that's the difficulty. How do we yeah. how do we make sure that happens and not have the 90-year-old say, why am I colouring in <laughs> pictures? Now, they might have been colouring in pictures. I guess the big thing is making sure that's not the negative question they're asking. Hmm. It should be, I'm colouring these pictures and I'm helping little Johnny who's nine and I'm 90 and we're learning something together. But how do we get to that, I guess, is the hard part. Yes, yeah, and and, and that's the hard part and that's the journey of, yes, the ultimate goal would be, yes, you can slip into any service and you're catering for everyone. That's probably going to be a long journey to with, till we can get to that place. It'll be got, where are the places? Years from ninety. <laughs> okay, excellent. I'm your nine. Resent started me think, singing that I am the church, you are the church. It doesn't matter mm. if I'm nine or I'm ninety, but yeah, yeah, I'm, that's, that's it. stuck in both of your heads since it's now going through my head. Um, <laughs> it is, yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's the journey. I mean, it'd be wonderful if we get to the that point um but yeah, it's definitely not going to happen overnight but yeah how do we continue to find and ha- how do we do intergenerationally intergenerational meaningfully so that yes the 90 person year old doesn't just go i was coloring in but i was doing this for a purpose mm. so when we do stuff we do it for a purpose and for a reason we better go because it's very, very late. Thank you for all your thoughts. Kyla, you'll have to just tell me your thoughts after. Okay, I've got a thought, but I'll tell you later. Okay. You can type them in, Kyla, so everyone can see it. That's right. 